today's video is all about creating some watercolor in Procreate and that will become more clear as we get started. Uh, first we need to create a document so I'm going to go up into this plus sign here and I am going to select, let's select a four here and as you can see you get a brand new document. All right so you click the plus sign over here to get your first layer and our first layer is going to be actually be a sketch and I always kind of start with this kind of blue color so if you click on this blue circle over here it brings up the color palette and here you can select the different uh, views that you want for it but today I'm just going to be over in the disk here and I am going to start off with this blue I'm going to show you how to make it uh, a different color later all right so we're going to go into our brushes and go into the sketching area and everyone who has procreate should have uh, these pencil brushes so i'm going to select peppermint and then over here i can change the size of my sketching pencil so i'm going to make it just a little bit bigger and I'm going to zoom in so I can take both my fingers here and zoom in and I'm going to sketch a bird today so I'm going to actually use a reference image just to get started and how you can show a reference image in Procreate is you go to the wrench icon you go to canvas and I'm going to click on reference and here you see that brings up this little box that you can drag around with your pencil. So I'm going to find an image. So I selected an image from one of my albums here and this is a bird. I think this image probably came from Google Images or something. Uh, we're just going to use it kind of get us to get us started today but what you can do within this box is not only can you move it around you can click on this box and zoom in for details and zoom out as well. So um, I often use an app called VizRef and uh, it allows you to create mood boards and then I use that while I'm also using Procreate but today we're going to use this tool. So I'm going to start sketching. I have my pencil set up here. Uh, you can see I, that's my pencil thickness as well as over here. I'm going to move this guy over here. This is your opacity. So I'm just gonna sketch him out on this one layer and you can rename this layer. Sketch. And I'm just gonna kind of go to town here. I'm always kind of um, continually looking at angles. If you're new to Procreate and you're just getting started with it, I think you're going to love it as an app. I know I do. It took me a little while to, to get where I liked it. Uh, for a long time I was a devotee of sketchbook by Autodesk. It's a great program as well. But now I prefer Procreate to um, Photoshop actually. I think just the convenience of being able to take this wherever you would like is pretty awesome. Uh, the portability of the iPad is what I'm referring to I guess here. I used to have to go on location and sketch people for graduate school and uh, at that time I was able to do it with my iPad and Sketchbook Pro and uh, it was really handy. There are unlimited amounts of undo in the digital world so that's always kind of nice. So see here I can zoom into the bird. 
a great thing too that I really like about um, Procreate here are the quick shapes. So to get a perfect circle, I draw a circle and then just hold my pencil down and then it brings that ellipse up. And then if I put a finger down also, it gives me a perfect circle. Um, and if I want a perfect line, I can just draw a line and keep my pencil on the paper and there you get a straight line. So and that is worth the price of admission for me. <laughs> See, this guy can come out a little bit more. Really, I'm not looking for perfection. I am just wanting to get a sketch in so I can show you how to use this or to get started. feet here. I can draw a little branch here. And then, so I've made the straight line. If you click up here on edit shape, then you can move that line around if you need to adjust it. And that is handy. I use that a lot. So we've got kind of this area here for his feet in this area here and I'm just kind of marking them here so I can note so basically what I do is I start with a sketch a lot of times you start with a sketch on one layer and you rough it in and then you can um, go on another layer and then ink it to make it a little more you can perfect it a little bit more. Today we're just gonna gonna get him locked in and then we're gonna paint him. I've been meaning to do some Procreate uh, tutorials for a while. This one uh, specifically had my friend Colin in mind as he's learning to use his iPad and Procreate on the iPad. So uh, a lot of times I use this cut and paste functionality. So you click on this, um, uh, uh, what would we call it? A lasso tool here. And I have it set to freehand so I can select an area that I wanna cut. So I've selected it. Then I click on my arrow key and I can move that over where I want it to be. And that's pretty handy. And this arrow key also when selected, if you don't have a particular selection, it will move your whole layer. So that's handy. We'll be doing that here in a minute. Okay, good enough for me. We got this guy. And I think there are unlimited ways that you can use Procreate. I even use Procreate Pocket sometimes. Uh, when I'm working on mural stuff on the fly, I can take a picture of a wall and put my drawing or image um, on the wall. And that way I can show a client what that might look like on the fly. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to draw a curved line here. And if I keep holding my uh, pencil to the iPad, it's going to give me a perfect curved line. Because I could see here on the side of this bird, I needed to fix this curve a little bit. I'm going to edit the shape so I can kind of manipulate it how I think it's supposed to, to be good enough. And then we can kind of sketch in. Of 
course, if you use two fingers here and you squish them bigger and smaller, just like you would on your phone, you can move your uh, art work here around to where it's more comfortable for you to draw. And that is another handy tool of Procreate. Hopefully you're following along with me here. It's a little bit on the fly. I'm just kind of pressing a little bit harder with this pencil to get thicker lines. So we can define this a little bit better. All right, so up here you see this eraser tool up here. You can select any brush that you would want to use for your eraser. Oftentimes I'm using an airbrush. And you can see I'm using the medium, oops, medium hard airbrush here. So I'm going to erase out some of the sketching here. Just like you would erase on a piece of paper and there's a variety of ways to do this but for the beginner you know sometimes just understanding what each little tool does uh, is pretty big okay i'm going to switch back to my paintbrush tool and Draw in his oops, tail feathers and kind of define his body a little bit better. Gonna switch and erase some things that I would like to remove. Now, like I said, you could do your sketch and then go back in and sketch over it cleaner. But this also kind of gives you an opportunity to see how you can use these tools, especially if this if you're new, new to the program. And you may choose to, we, we might choose to clean some stuff up here later, but. He's not quite as fluffy as our other fella here, but that's okay. So I'm going to keep my reference here in the corner, and I'm going to make my bird a little bit smaller and centered on this page. So by selecting the arrow key, I can make him smaller and move him around on this page. Now you can see with this menu up down here, I have uniform selected. Um, you can flip things horizontally or vertically while you're in this mode. Once you select the arrow key, the mode goes away. So I'm just going to click back on this um, just so you can kind of see free form allows you to distort. Uniform keeps your image the same so it doesn't distort it. It keeps the proportions the same. Distort allows you to distort an edge. This is handy for uh, if you're doing signs or something and there's lettering and they have to be distorted. Uh, and warp allows you to grab any point to distort. Today we're just using the uniform 
he's good where he's at. And so I am going to create a new layer and I am going to put it underneath my sketch layer here. And then I'm going to click on my sketch layer and you see this little in here. If you click on the in, it gives you lots of different modes that you can go in. And I'm going to put him into multiply and I'm going to bring down my opacity here. So you can see as I bring that down, my bird gets lighter and lighter. I'm going to put him about 50% for now. And then you can lock this. Uh, you can lock your sketch if you're afraid you're going to draw on it by sliding left with your pencil over this particular layer. Hit lock. And that way you aren't going to draw over your layer. Sometimes when you're getting started, it can get confusing. But the reason we do layers is so we can do just that, protect certain layers or use them and then remove them later. So I'm going to go to my watercolor brushes. These are actually brushes that are by Max Packs. And there are three different sets here. So you've got all kinds of different types of watercolor looks here. He's done a really nice job of these brushes. Um, I like this flood clean. So I'm going to select that. Um, I'm also just going to show you here. Here's another set of overlay uh, overlays you can do and splattering. And then, of course, if you use his erasers, it can help create that watercolor texture that you like to. But I'm going to keep my eraser the same. I'm going to go to the watercolor flood here, and that is what I'm going to start off with. So we're going to mimic some of these colors in this bird. So I'm going to start with green. So I'm going to select a green here. I might need to move my reference here so I can kind of observe which green it is. This is went a little less vibrant, I think. So in here, of course, you can see how much, how big your brush is or how small you want it. So I'm going to just, I'm continuously drawing here where there might be some green. And then I'm going to go in with my eraser and erase out what I don't want from this. So when I first started with this pack, I kind of struggled with it as a person who is a watercolor artist. I wasn't having as much luck. It wasn't turning out quite like I wanted. And so when I use this brush, I just erase out what I don't want. And then what you can do here is you can take your eraser and you can soften it. Let's move our reference. So you can soften it like you might with a brush by changing the opacity of your eraser here. So I can just soften this edge this is a light area still. It still has that watercolor feel, but I can continue to do layers. So I'm just going to keep softening this a little bit. And there are lots of ways to do this. This isn't the only way, but this is uh, kind of how I was working with these brushes. Okay, so I'm going to do a new layer because you can do a ton of layers usually depending on how big your iPad is and how um, what size you're using. I'm going to move my reference again. So I'm going to do this stick here again, kind of in the same way that I just worked there. I'm going to get this whole stick. And what's nice about uh, this flood, uh, it gives you lots of texture and granulation, but it's pretty even as far as 
painting. It, and it really, oops, it is really a personal preference depending on how you like your watercolor. And we will do some layering here. But for now, I'm just putting down my base colors. And actually, I'm going to leave I'm going to leave his little legs in this color too. Oops. We love the undo button. Okay, so you can really get your brush small and clean up some of these weird areas that are hard to get into. Another tool you can do is you can go in with this lasso tool and you can draw in areas that you want to take out. So you see I'm selecting this area and then I'm going to take my eraser and erase within this area that I've selected. And that is another great way to erase. But as I'm looking at this, I think I want to Gonna paint in here so I'm just gonna this is what it looks like when you paint over oops so uh, you can see you can affect over here your opacity of your brush and you can paint over an area if you want to but we're just going to keep moving and kind of get all of our colors in here, I think, and then we'll merge them down. So I'm going to keep with this color because there are some spots around his face. And I have a new layer. I'm on a new layer. So there's some areas here around his beak and kind of around his eye. And I'm not letting up on my brush. I'm just painting over these areas and then I can go in with my eraser. You may have to make it smaller. Just kind of have fun with it. And just keep moving from layer to layer. Okay. I'm going to switch to an orange, just sort of round robining this guy. That's not an orange there, just do a little more. And you can see here how they overlap with one another. And they create their own color when doing this. 
so I usually, of course, make it larger than the area that I'm working in. And just gently erasing here. You can also use your smudge tool. Let's see, maybe we can smudge in one of these. I mean, look at how many there are. You could go crazy. Maybe I will smudge in the same brush. That is not going to work. <laughs> so you can smudge in any kind of brush that you want. I might use a soft brush to just smudge out this edge a little. And just erase certain parts. I love this vibrant color. Oops, let's see. Being able to do this on layers can allow you to keep working back and forth until you find something that you really like and then you can merge them when you get there. So I'm going to go back into my purple here and erase some of this out. We have a little bit and we can soften here. Let's soften this here a little bit. And that kind of makes it pretty fun, right? And kind of shape this guy, smoothing out some of these edges because we'll have some other colors blending in. Oops, I'm erasing them, not smudging them. Wrong brush. Keeping hard edges where you want hard edges. And just kind of keep working the bird. So we will add some more layers. Oops. You can see if you lift off and then go back over, you're going to have this layering, um, which if that's what you're shooting for, that's awesome. But I am just going to put my brush continuously on there and go back in and erase. You can also move your layers around. So you can see I just moved this layer by selecting it, keeping my pencil on there, and dragging it below this other layer. Going to erase some of this. Kind of 
kind of always adjusting opacity here. And I know I move my canvas a lot. That I think is a perk of this program that you can do that. So you can see we have some overlapping going on here and we'll do a layer of gray, but you can smudge these together if you want. I'm using again that airbrush and here you can smudge them together if you like. Now, the only issue is that you lose some of that granulation, but you can go in and give it some texture by going to your oh, oh, watercolor erasers, selecting one of them, you can make it large and stamp it on your image. And that will kind of help you have some texture there. I'm gonna switch this back. I'm going to add another layer. We're going to put in this kind of dark, really dark blue color because we have this kind of where the bird's breast is, breastbone is. And we've also got some feathers here. I think we can also use this for the beak. and maybe a little bit of eyeliner, so to speak, for the bird. So it doesn't look like much now, but we're gonna go in and kind of revise this. I think I'm gonna go in with a harder airbrush here so I have a, a crispier edge. out. Define his beak here. And you can either draw in some of these darker areas. So we will, I'm going to draw, just draw in here. Still looks like I have some erasing to do here. You can smudge. And you could smudge this air darker area if you want. You can also erase out some of this area where the light is. So I'm gonna Go back to my soft airbrush 
and just lightly erase some of these areas. Might need to make it a little bit smaller here. And you can see this gives it a little bit of definition here. It starts creating a curve. And you could go back in. I'm gonna change the opacity here to make it soft. Oops. And lightly. So let's address this area. So I did not quite do this right, so I'm going to erase out this area here. Oh no. Oh nuts. So you can see that was on a layer. I failed to put it on its own layer. So what I will do is I'm just going to smudge this a little and see what that does. Not too bad. I'm going to erase out. Oops. Okay. I'm going to smudge. I can go in with a harder edge here and just erase some of this over smudging. We can go back in with a little bit of this blue on a separate layer. And I might diffuse this just a little bit in the Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to select the layer because it's on its own layer. And then I put my pencil down on my page and drag it to the right. And you can see up above here we have how much you're blurring it. There, and I'm going to select that. Good. And... I'm going to change the opacity here. Let's see, what's it look like if I drag it under? That is fine. So I'm going to merge that down. I'm going to create another layer because I want to fill this area in too. And then I can go in and erase any section that I want to. And I'm going to erase out this. So this is one layer. 
going to actually merge that down. I am going to erase out this back part of this bird. We're going to put that kind of green color in there, but we've got to make sure we do a new layer. It's kind of a yellowy. Goldy greeny color. I'm always looking at my layers, making sure I'm on the right layer. And you can also use this curve tool with the eraser too, which can be kind of handy. So you see I made that curve and then I'm going to edit that shape and kind of erase that area that I want it to erase. I'm going to do a brown layer so we can get our eye in there. Again, you can use your eraser and you can create a shape. So I can create a circle, I can edit that shape. kind of erase in that shape, just, just kind of a, a handy tool. I think I might use this brown also for the shadows here of the his feet here. You could even use it underneath here. And then just go in and erase your shape. The beauty of watercolor is that it is transparent. I think Max has done a good job with these uh, brushes to make them transparent and work in a similar way that watercolor does work. And this layer you could multiply if you wanted to because the eye is on that same layer and you, you might not quite do that. Oops, that's not what I wanted to multiply. Okay. 
so he doesn't look exactly like our little bird, but you can kind of get the idea of how to use these. And this bird is so fun because he's so colorful. So again, I'm just kind of erasing out Fish are exceptionally fun in this vein as well, of course, because they're in water that already it makes it kind of fun. But definitely play with, play around with your subject matter as you're working. I'm going to do another layer. That was kind of this um, darker green gray color. just having fun with this. And I can go to my other layers and adjust them a little bit. And that is what's beautiful about being able to do this layers as you can uh, change layers as you see fit and then you know and here you can check or uncheck them to make them appear or disappear so you know which layer you want to move to and you can just have fun with them before you commit So I'm going to create another layer and create a dark layer. Oops, that didn't work out. Let's see. Let's get a darker layer. I'm actually going to make another layer here and use the same color to 
can kind of carve out this shadow shape whoops I didn't mean to do oh. do that And you can even lighten this here so it might affect the opacity here to see what that look like. We'll do a little pupil. And again, I'm going to make that more circular with my eraser and I'm gonna put this in multiply mode it doesn't make quite too much of a difference but okay now if you want your reference to go away which I'm gonna have it go away I'm gonna go to my wrench tool and you can see I'm in the canvas mode click on reference and you can make it go away that way so if you're happy with your drawing, what you can do, what I will do for this is I'm going to combine all of these layers together. So you have to make sure they're all on. And I sc scrunch them all together. You can see I have one more to add, so I'm going to scrunch that one down together. And now you can see the color is all on one layer. I'm going to go in with my eraser tool with a hard airbrush. And I'm going to create this little light in the eye. Now, for our sketch, you can do multiple things. You can remove your sketch, although in this situation, I think we're going to keep it. I'm going to slide it over to the left and click Unlock. And make sure that I'm on this the bird uh, sketch line. And you can go into this magic wand area and go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'm going to click on the layer. And here, over here in brightness, you can make that lighter or darker, and you can take all the color out of it and make that sketch just a dark black sketch. Now you can also affect your saturation here like you can see my blue is going from gray to a vibrant blue and you can also change the hue here to be whatever you like I think I'm gonna make it a sketch here actually forgot that I made this 50% um, opacity so if I bring it all the way up here we can see what that looks like and adjust it accordingly. I'm going to move this to normal and I'm going to adjust it to maybe 56% and then I can combine them. Now, you don't have to combine your layers if you don't want to. That's just, um, you have the option to do that. Again, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and put it in the center of my page here and erase anything that I didn't want in there. So I'm going to erase this line here. Now you could keep adding to this guy if you want, but this gives you kind of an idea of what it looks like to use the watercolor brushes from Max Packs. So hopefully this 
walkthrough was helpful for you. Uh, we could keep uh, working on this guy uh, as much as we want or as much as you want. Um, but I just wanted to walk you through in real time what that would look like. So if you got something out of this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and let me know that you liked this tutorial. And if you want to see more of my artwork and projects that we do in tutorials, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you being here for this tutorial and you'll have to let me know if there's something specific that you'd like to see. So thanks for tuning in and until next time, keep being creative. I will see you later.